Hey guys, this is Dan with Gears and Gadgets. Thanks for tuning in. So I'm coming to you guys to talk about the Lemon Law. And this is not meant to be legal advice by any stretch of the imagination. I'm just one guy who happens to have drawn a couple short straws with some vehicles. And I'm not here to talk about either one of those in particular, but I am just kind of here to talk about the Lemon Law in general and some advice that I would give to anybody else maybe going through this process. So again, by no means meant to be legal advice. And if anybody has anything to add to the commentary, please drop a comment down below as anybody who's searching for information on this is absolutely looking for constructive input on how to handle these types of situations. So again, I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole of what happened in my specific scenarios, but just more or less what I think you might want to do if you're going through this process. But if it gets uh, squirrely at all, I would recommend there's attorneys out there you can contact, but you don't necessarily have to. So a big reason why I say this isn't legal advice is because every state has different rules and regulations, laws saying what is and what isn't a lemon. And I know like here in Arizona, I believe it's uh, four failed attempts on the same repair or 30 days or more in the shop for any repairs. And I also believe it has to be within the first two years of ownership under 24,000 miles. I think that's relatively standard, but I'm also not entirely sure. Just if you want to drop a comment down below what your state lemon law is, if you happen to know it, it would certainly help other people who might be in your state as well. So first step I want to say is log everything. And that's even before you start going through a process where you think you might have a lemon on your hands. So naturally, if you buy a new vehicle, if you're going to take it in for service, always keep all those service receipts. You're going to need them down the road, possibly. Don't throw them out. Also make sure that what you went in for service for is logged appropriately on that ticket. I have heard, I personally haven't really experienced, but I have heard of some dealerships maybe not logging the issues correctly. So when something actually does happen and you need to go back and refer to those old service tickets, it may not clearly convey what the problem was. And you might have a hard time reestablishing that, yes, that was actually my first repair attempt if the ticket doesn't really match that. So again, make sure it matches. Now, if things start to get squirrely and you start to experience issues where uh, you'll find dealerships might start getting kind of dodgy in the way they handle things, remember, you don't know the future. So if they tell you it's going to be two or three months before a part comes in, it might be four or five months. That's just an estimated arrival of that part. So at that point, if you start to get that kind of feedback, start logging even more. Uh, start spreadsheets, start notes. There's many different ways you can do this, whether it's the notes app on your phone or a spreadsheet. Personally, I use Airtable for a lot of production for this channel. So I just created an Airtable and started keeping running notes of issues that I was having. Uh, there's many ways to do it, but make sure you start documenting every time you call somebody, if they call you, if they leave you a voicemail, all those things. Number two, uh, keep calm. Now, that's easier said than done. There is footage on this channel of me losing my cool at a dealership several years ago. GM doesn't provide rental cars. Right, but understand, when I put my request in online, I selected I needed a rental. So when that, when that no longer became an option, somebody should have called and said, hey, just so you know, before you truck in here, uh, you know, we don't have a rental for you. You're going to have to come back by 7. Not have me drive all the way here half an hour. I'm already on a long lunch to begin with. Now you're asking me to go back and do, and do it again. Before you go through these kinds of experiences, I think you have this mentality of, I have a warranty, I'll go to the dealership, they'll take care of me. And what I found, once a service advisor sort of knows about it and knows that the manufacturer has no fix for it, they can't tell you that. So what they'll start to do is start trying to like excuse it away as if, well, I've never heard of this problem before, or... Um, try to explain to you that what you're experiencing isn't happening. I think they're also victims of the manufacturers at times. So where you might want to lose your mind in those scenarios, and I'm not perfect, I've learned over the, the years that, that it, it doesn't do you any good. You may want to do it, they might deserve it, but it doesn't get you anywhere. It, it will elevate your blood pressure. You can yell and scream all you want. If anything, if there's ever any shred of hope of somebody helping you, it might be the dealership good chances are they're not going to be super invested in a problem they can't figure out. But I mean, screaming and yelling, it just doesn't go anywhere. If anything, maybe complicates things. So that takes us into point number three. The dealership is not your friend. 
the dealership's job is to pretend like they're your friend. That's my, you know, my opinion is that the dealership's job is to sell you a vehicle. And if they can do it and make some money, great. If you can bring your car in, they can find the problem and they can fix it. And you walk out the door and you're happy. Great. It, it can work out well. But when things go bad, the dealership is kind of on an island. And when they're not in a position to help, they're, they're just not going to help. And that's why I say the dealership, not your friend. To everybody out there who says that they have some great dealership they work with, wonderful. But I can absolutely, undeniably tell you that there are many, many customers of that exact same dealership who have dealt with problems. And uh, it's really kind of a luck of the draw. Kind of sad to say, but again, dealerships, not really your friend when they're selling you something and not really your friend when they're servicing things when things get difficult. So going into number four, which is kind of a, a carryover from number three, the dealership not being your friend, there is a difference between what you, the consumer, should get and uh, what they are legally obligated to provide for you. And a lot of this has to do with, well, I guess the repair attempts and all that, you can get in, down that rabbit hole, but rental cars. If you look through the comment sections on some of my older videos, you'll see people like, they need to give you a rental car, or they need to give you something that's similar to what you had, or... They need to, need to, need to. People say they need to all kinds of things. And the truth is, they don't have to anything. They should all of those things, but they don't have to. If you look through your sales documents or the warranty documents, pretty much anyone that I've ever read says you're not entitled to that. So after you go through these nightmares of maybe trying to deal with the dealership or getting a cold shoulder from uh, the dealership saying like, hey, the manufacturer doesn't have any answers to this problem. I don't know where to go from here. This is where you hit kind of a fork in the road. I guess my next five, six, and seven are really just three different forks that you can take. My number five, I almost skip over all the time, would be contact the manufacturer, maybe escalate it. I think it's kind of a time waster in my opinion, because I think these manufacturer hotlines is a place where they just try to get the least squeakiest wheels to go away, where maybe they'll offer you some scripted apology, tell you they're working on a solution and then months go by and nothing really happens. And if you get mad enough, maybe they throw you a free car payment or enough to cover a car payment, maybe some free floor mats. Uh, and if you accept that, great, move on. But again, that's I just skip that step because I feel like it's, it's just more frustration in an already incredibly frustrating uh, scenario. So going to number six, Again, this is all kind of a fork in the road. You have many different options you can take at this point. Would be to file a Better Business Bureau claim and that they have an auto line for that. But we'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, that's what I'll probably focus most of the rest of this video on. Number seven is uh, getting an attorney. And if you get an attorney, you can do that. They'll take care of pretty much everything for you and start the process. But a lot of those attorneys are just going right back to the Better Business Bureau and going through that conduit for a solution uh, or a similar scenario. I, I'm not a big fan of attorneys. If you can handle it yourself, I'd prefer to handle it myself. Probably more money in utilizing an attorney, but um, I don't know. I just, I'd rather get this stuff over as quick as possible. Uh, the most financially beneficial way to me. So that's going back to the Better Business Bureau path. Anybody can do it. It is essentially, uh, I'll link down below. Better Business Bureau Auto Line is a service that is an arbitration for vehicle complaints. So you're going to have to make sure first, before you even go down this auto line complaint path, make sure that you have a lemon on your hands. The longer you wait, the harder it gets and the longer it takes. So if you're entering this world, just jump in the pool today. It's miserable. It, it's an absolute terrible process, but delaying it, it's going to be just as if not more difficult later just get it over with. So keep in mind, the Better Business Bureau is an arbitration arm. They have this auto line, which is like an arbitration arm that manufacturers willingly participate in. But remember, the Better Business Bureau, they say they're a nonprofit organization, but they're funded by businesses. They do help. But again, remember what they're what, what and who they're funded by, which is the businesses. I will link down below the Better Business Bureau's auto line and you can go through there. They have all the information you need, uh, but make sure you do start filing that. And what they'll do is they'll go through and verify that basically check the boxes. You know, you'll have to provide them all the information, dates, times, uh, mileage, 
when you went for services, what those services were for, provide them the paperwork. It's a lot of stuff you have to provide, but all they're doing is going down and basically checking boxes to say yes or no, this is a claim. Now, once they determine that it is a claim, uh, they will then forward it over to the manufacturer and that manufacturer will then start to negotiate, I guess, the end resolve there. So uh, throughout my research and of course, a little bit of experience, uh, there is basically three different options that you have, some better than others and different for each individual person. But the first option would be basically a buyback where the manufacturer will They'll basically cover the purchase price, any payments you've made, down payments, but they will charge you a usage fee. So if you have 10,000, 20,000 miles on that vehicle, they will charge you a fee for that. And that fee could be several thousand dollars uh, depending on usage fees. So not always the best case scenario. What I do think is the best outcome, but maybe the most elusive is what I've heard is a uh, collateral swap where basically the manufacturer will work with the dealership, find you a vehicle that's similar MSRP, similar spec, and just swap you into that vehicle. The other option, and I think it's the, aside from them saying, sorry, we're not gonna give you anything, which by the way, is not the end of the road. You can still go arbitration. We'll talk about that in a moment. But uh, the other option would be a cash and keep where you basically agree with them on a price that you're willing to just say, okay, this vehicle isn't what I thought it was. Here's a sum of money to basically accept it and move on with life. With that, uh, again, the other option is they just say like, hey, we're not gonna give you anything. Uh, or if they offer you a, a bag of M&Ms and some free floor mats, and you're just looking at that going like, man, I can't believe that's all I'm getting out of this. It doesn't have to be that way. You can still say, nope, not good enough. I wanna go to arbitration. And I believe the Better Business Bureau will actually uh, have that arbitration where you guys sit down and come to terms uh, with uh, somebody else who might assist in in assigning or helping out uh, evaluations. I, I don't totally know how that process works. I've never quite gotten that far and, and I didn't go down that rabbit hole of research. So uh, with that, I would probably recommend at that point getting an attorney because I would have to assume that an arbitration is going to be you, an arbitrator, and probably an attorney from the manufacturer. And I personally am not smart enough to sit there and go toe to toe with some attorney uh, who might be buddies with the arbitrator and you're just kind of sitting there as a nobody trying to get your, yourself through it. So uh, it's a brutal process. I don't recommend it for anybody. I'm just trying to provide some context to anybody who might be going through a situation like this, uh, unsponsored. I'm not an attorney trying to sell services. I'm just a, a guy trying to offer some help if I can. This channel is not becoming a Lemon Law channel. At least I surely hope not. Um, it, it's, it's a rough process. I really wanted to make this video for anybody who might be out there dealing with a scenario like this. Uh, there's a, a lot of us who buy vehicles that, you know, we're happy to get to a point in our life where we can justify this expense. It costs a lot of money. It's not just like, you know, I'm, I'm rich and can buy these vehicles out cash. A lot of people are taking loans out on vehicles and doing it with a level of trust with manufacturers that uh, the warranty is going to be honored. The vehicle they're getting is what they were sold. Unless you're independently wealthy and can just basically say, oh, write this one off and just go buy a new one. Uh, if you're really relying on this vehicle for uh, day to day and, um, you know, it, it it's tough as a an average person trying to get through stuff like this. And that's why I'm trying to make this video to help provide, if anything, maybe a little bit of conversation around it, a little bit of guidance from maybe what I've experienced or researched myself and open the comment section up down below for anybody else who's maybe dealt with this. If you know of any good attorneys that have helped people out in the past, you can drop those in the comments. I'm not promoting or condoning any of them. Uh, it's just kind of a, a place where maybe people can help uh, one another talk through some of this stuff. So with that being said, guys, that is my Lemon Law video. I got enough requests from people to make this video that I thought I would sit down here and uh, run through it the way that I understand it. So with that being said, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. If this is your first time tuning in, please that subscribe button down below. Remember, likes go a long way to help support the channel. I'll see you guys next time.